Hello, Twitch in the present and YouTube in the future. How is everyone tonight? It is a beautiful evening to play some Shovel Knight. Uh, hello to Oblivix and Quack Party in the chat. Let me know if things are too loud. It sounds a little loud to me, but it always sounds a little loud. Uh, yeah, this is Shovel Knight. This is my favorite game of the year so far. Uh, this is a 2D platformer done in the style of classic NES games, but from a modern perspective. Sorry, I just wanted to make sure I was streaming. Still, uh, still getting used to doing this on the reg. Again, it's a tiny bit loud. Okay, I'll turn it down. I think the, uh, I think the sound in this game is louder than in most games. Alright, let me know how that is. Uh, so yeah, this is by Yacht Club Games. This is their first game. I believe at least one member of Yacht Club Games used to work for WaveWord. Wasn't 2100 UTC an hour ago? Nope. Uh, 2100 UTC is right now. That is, uh, that is 5, or, uh, 9 p.m. UTC. Uh, 5 p.m. my time. And UTC is four hours ahead of me. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. I've played this game a ton. I finished this game about four times. This is my new game plus file. This is my uh, my normal file, and I'm going to start another new save for uh, for streaming purposes. Uh, I'm just going to do a normal playthrough. Uh, I might do a, a new game plus playthrough on the stream in the future if this is a popular feature. Uh, Everything about this game is fantastic. Uh, the way it looks, the way it plays, the music. They look like pretty legendary adventures to me. I really like the, uh, the color highlighting of keywords in the intro. Very, very Zelda-ish. music in this game, uh, most of it was done by Vert, uh, aka, I, th I think his real name is Jake Kaufman. He's a very prolific uh, music composer. He's done work for a lot of games. I mostly know him from his video game remix stuff, uh, but they did hire one of the old Capcom composers, uh, like, not, not old as in she's old, but like, she, she's, she worked for the company quite a while ago. I believe she worked on some of the old Mega Man titles, and she contributed a couple tracks to this game. I don't know her name off the top of my head, sorry. Hi hey Duke, first time for me to get to watch your stream live. Oh, hello, uh, Kutef. Glad to have you. Alright, so, this is basically a two-button game. Uh, you have jump, and you have shovel. You can dig stuff out of the ground, you can whack enemies with your shovel, You can uh, dig through barriers like the one up there. Sometimes you'll find gems. Uh, there are no lives in this game or continues or anything like that. Basically, uh, every level has checkpoints. And when you die, you start at the most recent checkpoint you made it to. In the normal game, there are five checkpoints in every level. And in New Game Plus, there are, there are two checkpoints in every level. And one of the unique features of this game is that you can destroy the checkpoints if you want to get some extra money from them. You can't do it in here because this is just like an intro kind of tutorial tutorial area, but in the actual game you can destroy the checkpoints and uh, they give you varying amounts of money. You can tell how much money they give you by by how big the gym in the checkpoint globe is. And if you destroy the checkpoint, obviously you can't use it if you die. And there's an achievement for beating the game with destroying all of the checkpoints, which uh, which I got. That was that was a fun playthrough. Uh, that was also my uh, beat the game without buying any of the magic items playthrough. So that was that was kind of 
double fun going for uh, two of the harder achievements in the game in one playthrough. Um, I've gotten every achievement in this game except four. I need to get the achievement for beating the game without dying, and there's one for beating the game without falling in the bottomless pit, and there's one for speedrunning the game, beating it in an hour and a half or less, and there's one for uh, not spending any money. And in the playthrough where I didn't buy any magic items, I still spent money on like health up health upgrades and stuff. So, so that one was not uh, that did not count for that achievement. Uh, the only collectible in this game you, you find are these parchments with music notes on them. Uh, you can give them to a bard in the main town, and he will uh, perform music for you on request. Damn, I've literally never known that and I've beaten the game, that you can break the checkpoints. Really, I'm kind of surprised you didn't uh, you didn't stumble across it by mistake. Uh, I mean, I, I knew you could break the checkpoints because... Uh, because I watched uh, Giant Bomb's quick look at the game before I started playing. But I mean, you can kind of intuit that there's something to the checkpoints, uh, because... Like I said, they have different they have different types of gem in them, and uh, or at least I, I don't know. I mean, I could have played the whole game and not realizing you, you could break the checkpoints. I guess it's just uh, well, I guess it's a little confusing that you can't break the checkpoints in the tutorial, but you can in the rest of the game. Is Duke online? Uh, yeah. Is can everyone? Can everyone see the stream? Um, I should uh, should be up and running for everyone. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Like I always forget to do, is sync the chat. So as soon as I uh, get out of this precarious area, I will go on ahead and do that. All right. Uh, let's see here. Music's gonna stop here. S Y N C. All right. Well, that's only uh, about eight minutes into the stream. I guess that's not too bad. So uh, there's also a a pogo mechanic, and it's kind of similar to one in uh, in Rogue Legacy, where you can hit down in the air and you do this down attack that you can use to bounce on enemies. But it feels a lot better in this game than than it did in Rogue Legacy, in my opinion. Uh, in Rogue Legacy, it was a little, uh, it was a little iffy, like, uh, the hitboxes weren't always where you expected it to be. Your screen is super low. Uh, what does that mean? Oh. Shit, sorry. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. Oh, this stream's off to a great start, isn't it? Apologies, everyone. I am a, uh, I'm a professional video game player. I make $115,000 uh, a year, or an hour, and uh, I know I should be held to a higher standard of quality than, than what I'm providing, so my apologies. Rogue, Leg Rogue Legacy's Pogo was definitely frustrating at times. Yeah, I ended up not using it nearly as much as I use it in this game. This game, it feels very solid. Like, uh, there are a lot of platforming segments where you're sort of required to use the Pogo. Like, uh, this is a pretty good example. You're not required to use the Pogo here, but it definitely helps to get past this dragon. Health pickups are, uh, are pretty... It's pretty generous with them in this, in this game, uh, at least when you're when you're not doing a new game plus. Uh, running out of life should not be that much of an issue for me, hopefully. When I was going for the no death achievement, what almost always ended up, ended up happening was I fell in a pit or I fell on spikes, and spikes are an, spikes are an instant kill. So those are my main my main obstacles. I'm going to try for a no death run, just uh, just because why not? And uh, I don't expect to get it in this playthrough, and, that, and that's fine. Just uh, 
you know, I can say I consider it good practice. So just doing a normal, normal ass playthrough will uh, will help me get get the skills I need to succeed. I've, I've been able to be like the first three or so bosses without dying, and then, uh, well, th that's after a lot of practice on those three levels. And we, we're at the first mini boss here, the Black Knight. Well, that's uncalled for. There's no need for name calling. The Order of No Quarter is a great name for a team of villains. I will. So yeah, the this game just nails the the Nintendo the well specifically the NES aesthetic without uh I mean it's it's not like you couldn't make this game on an NES because obviously you wouldn't be able to do widescreen, and uh, there's the sprites are faster than you can do on a real NES, and the, I think the color palette isn't 100% faithful to the NES. But you know, in spirit, this is basically like playing, like if if Nintendo games were unchanged from 1985 to 2014 in terms of like style, this is exactly what they would be like. I get why it's called Shovel Knight now, shoot me. And uh, after some of the bosses, not all of them, you have this little interlude here where it's like a dream sequence. And uh, sometimes there are monsters and stuff you can kill to, to get extra gems, but not, not in the first one. And uh, I bet there's some treasure under that campfire, yeah. It's actually an, an achievement for uh, digging up the campfire for the first time. I guess it's not uh, its not immediately obvious that there would be treasure under there. But you know, when you, when you have a shovel, when, when all you have is a shovel, everything looks like a pile of treasure. This is the first town you get to. There's one other town uh, a little bit later on. That's right, no weapon. Just shovel. I will. To a horse lady has to say. Me too, maiden. Can I catch up to Basket Man? Oh wait, no. Here, I'll talk to uh, to Dear Lady. Her her name is actually Dear Lady. That's nice. And this is the bard I was talking about. You talk to him to deliver the music sheets. And I have two already. And he get, pays you 500 for each one. And you can talk to him anytime and ask him to play you a song. Now, I believe... Hmm. I have a file that has all of the music collected. I'm not sure why... I'm not sure why I have seven here. I should have either the two that I just found or, or all of them. I'm not sure where these seven are coming from, but yeah, you can select a theme and it will play that for you. I'll play main theme. How do I never find these things? First the checkpoints, now the campfire. Well, I guess you have to you have to think like a like a shoveler. All right, so this is the gastronomer. If you bring him a meal ticket, he will increase your maximum health. And this is the Magicist. And she will increase your maximum magic. But I don't have any relics yet, so uh, I can't do anything with her. Now if I speak to the Gotician, he will offer to sell you a meal ticket. The first one only costs a thousand. And they get progressively more expensive as you play. So I'll go ahead and get one of those. Talk to the Gastronomer. And he prepared a delicious meal. It looked like a leg like of fish. That's a uh, that's good eating. 
And uh, here are some of the bar patrons. The Juice Maid. And uh, the Dancer. So if I dis defeat the Spectre Knight, she will bestow upon me her greatest treasure. So I'm looking forward to that. We have the Deposed King. So basically, all of these, or these two, both have issues with uh, some of the some of the other knights we'll be facing. That gilded goon, and then this is the uh, grandma. Well, this is Grandma Swamp. She'll give you some information about your stats. So I've dug seven piles. I've collected six thousand one hundred fifteen gold. I haven't died yet. Woohoo! And I spent twelve minutes playing slash talking. All right, see you later, Kutef. Thanks for hanging out. Sorry, the stream isn't. Uh, isn't early enough for you to watch in its entirety, but it'll be up on YouTube later. Grandma Swamp isn't a witch, by the way. Alright, we have a secret over here that leads to a, kind of a fun little bonus mini game. Costs 100 gold to play. Alright, so. Basically, the red targets at the top are worth the most amount of points. Uh, the green ones are worth uh, kind of a lot, and then the blue ones are hardly worth anything. And you need to get over a certain amount of points for her to give you uh, a music sheet. Uh, I've never failed this. I'm not sure if there's uh, if there are like better re better rewards for uh, for doing better at the game or not. I missed quite a few just now, but uh, hopefully, I should be able to redeem myself. Ah crap! I missed the uh, missed the uh, the red one. Two hundred five. I think that's good enough. Yep, she was very impressed by my uh, my shoveling skills. How long is this game from start to finish? Uh, first time I beat it, I think it took me about seven hours or so, and uh, after that it was a little easier. It, it depends on if you're going for achievements and whatnot. The music she hear. Uh, this is Croker, who has a lot of great jokes for you. Don't throw in the trowel. And uh, he's very proud of his jokes, as you can tell. You give him an inch, he thinks he's a ruler. Yes, indeed. I I'd be proud of that one, too. This is Chester. He sells the relics, the magic items you can use right now. All I have available is the fishing rod. And, uh... The Chaos Sphere. I'll go ahead and buy both of those. And I should have enough to get what this guy has to sell. Well, one of them anyway. Yeah. The the Trouple Chalice. A vessel for storing mythical Ikor. And, uh... The relics are... By default, you use them by holding up and pressing... Oops. I traveled with some horse adventures, but they were also negative. I get it, Croker. So by default, you hold up and press attack to use the uh, the relics, but you can also set an option to assign it to a separate button. I go with up and attack just because that's sort of like Castlevania style, and uh, it's uh, you know it's it's what I'm used to. Uh, okay, so I'm pretty much done in town. I'll talk to a couple more more people here. Oh, there's an achievement for uh, bouncing on this for I think. 10 seconds maybe and uh, that one it's a little tricky to get but when, once you get the hang of uh, of keeping your bounce going it's uh, it's not that hard and if we stand on this lady's shoulders well see what she has to say first of all these buckets are heavy well I will uh, take advantage of your buckets to jump up here and grab some treasure what did it say running kid I'm the fastest, no one can outrun me. The Super Skeleton. His jumping attacks are ferocious. I'll keep that in mind. This uh, hedge farmer is skeptical. Are you really the Shovel Knight? Let me tell you something, hedge farmer. Could a non-Shovel Knight do that? 
Damn straight. And, uh, Grizzled Seer. Many trials await me. Don't despair. May each defeat strengthen my resolve. I'm sure they will. Alright, and as you can see, we have sort of a Mario 3 style map. Uh, you cannot progress past the, uh, the zones until you complete them. Of course, I can, I can bypass it and, you know, go forward a little bit, but there are these locks here. Uh, you have to defeat, like, this one I have to defeat the Spectre Knight before I can go this way. This one I have to defeat the King Knight before I can go past that. So, uh, and then the, the smoke will move and, and, uh, show more of the map as I go. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take on the King Knight. Technically, the first boss, uh, in the order, I think, is the Plague Knight. Since the Plague Knight boss is bef the lock gate is before the one for King Knight, but I'm just used to doing this level first. So this is the only music note in the game that I had to look up how to find, uh, because it didn't occur to me to go backwards at the beginning of this level instead of forwards. Uh, the fishing rod, uh, there are these sparkly pits located throughout the game, and when you use a fishing rod there, you can collect fish. Sometimes it's a, uh, a goldfish that's worth money. Sometimes it's a helpful fish who will offer you items and stuff. And also, okay, when you die, you lose a percentage of your gold. I forget exactly how much, what the percentage is, but uh, when you respawn, the gold is, is floating wherever you died, like in these floating money bags with wings, and uh, you can collect that. So you can sort of do like a corpse run, and uh, the fishing rod can also help you get the bags of money that are hard to reach in out of the way places. And I got lava. Great. I don't really use the chaos sphere that often. Sometimes, like the physics on it are kind of uh, kind of weird. Like, sometimes you're in a place where, you know, you're in a good position to where you can hit a bunch of enemies with it, but I, I didn't get that much usage out of it. It's another pit here, so we'll go on ahead and fish that. You know, just take a break out of the action to go fishing. It's a nice, relaxing hobby to have. Not like video games, man. Video games are super stressful. This game is, uh, it's challenging. Uh, like I said, the first time I played it, it took about seven hours, and I died quite a bit. I think my total death counter at the end of the game was, like, a little over a hundred. But to be fair, most of those were in the last few levels of the game. Which, you know, that's why I'm not really expecting to get the no-death playthrough with a no-death achievement on this playthrough, but, uh, you know, man can dream. So uh, I just destroyed the first checkpoint and uh, got some money for that. I probably, once I die, I'll probably stop destroying all the, all the checkpoints, since at that point, you know, it'll be, there's no reason for, no reason for me to go after the no-death achievement. But, uh, you know, it's helpful just to get a little bit more money early on so so you can buy more you can buy health grades health upgrades earlier and stuff. Alright, uh I've actually I've actually died quite a few times trying to uh to do this. Like, timing it with the platforms and the lava can be a little tricky, but I'm going to go on ahead and go for it just, uh, just to show off everything that there is to see in this game. Ho hopefully it won't kill me. And, uh, you remember Chester, who we talked to in town? He sold us the fishing rod and stuff. Occasionally you'll, you'll see a blue chest and, well, I guess, I guess there's one in every level. There's a blue chest... Hey, it's Chester. 
the aptly named Chester. And uh, when, whenever you buy from him in the level, it's always cheaper than it is in town. Like, if I if I didn't find him here, and I bought the, the Flare Wand in town, it would have cost 2000 instead of 1000 So, always good to find him if possible. And the Flare Wand I use all the damn time. It's, it's probably the most useful relic in the game. Other than the, uh, the Chalice, which, which I'll get to after this, after, uh, after this level. Alright, this is where I always screw up the timing. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I love the way Shovel Knight is made on the, the 3DS. The game is on the top screen and your gear menu is on the bottom. It's almost the same with VVVVVV, how the game is game on top and map on bottom. Yeah, uh, this game is also on the 3DS and Wii U. Uh, I think it's coming to other platforms. I'm not sure which ones. Would be kind of nice to have the ability to select your your uh, your relic without having to go into the sub menu. I kind of wish like the uh, like the bumpers or the L and R buttons let you cycle through through your relics. Not not that you switch relics on the fly all that much, but uh, it would be it would, it would be a little useful. I don't know if there there are any other differences between this version and the 3DS version. I'm assuming there's some kind of like 3D graphical effect, as there is in most 3DS games, but uh, but I, I've not played that one. I think the most useful is the phase locket. Well, the phase locket, uh, it's an item that makes you invincible for a few seconds, and it is extremely useful. Uh, I don't usually, I don't use it all that often. I guess I should if I'm going for a no death playthrough because it makes things a lot easier but uh, I think I think it takes a lot of the fun out of some of the game so uh, so, so I don't use it very much like for example this would be a very useful place to have the phase locket because this uh, this Griffin's fire can be a little, little tricky to dodge if I was speedrunning I would just take the hit and just walk through him but uh, but since I'm not I can uh, I can deal with him with with honor the honorable way by uh, by killing him with a shovel. So it occurred to me after I played this game for like 30 hours or something that uh, it uses the word chivalry a lot in this game. You know, like fighting for for honor and chivalry, and I thought it was just like a cute shovel-related word. I didn't realize that it was a pun on the word chivalry until like I, I already beat the game like three times so uh, I can kind of imagine like coming up with the idea for this game based on the pun chivalry like uh, like you come up with the word chivalry and like oh that's funny it sounds kind of like chivalry well we should make a character who's a knight with a shovel so we can use the uh, the shovelry pun. Like, yeah, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And uh, thus, the concept for Shovel Knight is born. I have no idea if that's the way it actually went down, but... Uh, but I've definitely come up with ideas based on a play on words like that before. You know, just so something really s simple and silly, or seemingly silly, can lead to like a really cool idea. Crap. Uh, I don't think I want to be able to get that stuff. Oh well. I have enough stuff. So th these knights with the shield are probably the most annoying... Well, one of the most annoying enemies in the game. Uh, again, if I was speedrunning, I would just ignore this guy, but... Uh, but, you know. You drop stuff, and... I want to. Uh, I want to get the full experience. This is definitely one of my favorite tunes in the game. The uh, the the King Knight theme, or whatever this level is actually called. Oh, Pride More Heap, I think. 
It's a really, really great piece of music. All the music in this game is great. You knock the heads off the statues for some reason. It's the little touches like that, that that I always appreciate in a game. Alright, this next section coming up has caused me quite a few deaths in the past. Oh hey, it's another fishing hole. Went ahead and uh... Hey, this is a trail pole. Okay, so he gave me the the Ikor of Boldness. So in your chalice, I was going I was going to talk to the Trowel King after this level, but um, I, I forgot that there were Trowel Poles uh, that I would talk to in the meantime. But there are three there are three different kinds of Ikor you can get. Uh, you can get, you can have up to two chalices, and pretty much the only useful one is the is, is I don't I forget what it's called. It's the one that heals you. It's the healing potion. Uh, that is the one that I always get because, like, the ability to become invincible for 10 seconds, I mean, I'm sure that's useful in limited situations, but once I get the phase locket, I can just use that one twice and, like, use the phase locket twice instead of, uh, instead of having to rely on, you know, one of my two potion slots for that. And then the, th the third Ikor, uh, it makes treasure. Like, it makes you a magnet for treasure for a, a limited period of time. And, I mean, it's cool, but there's really no shortage of treasure in this game. Like, e even not destroying the checkpoints, I should still have more than enough gold to buy everything in the game. Alright, we are at boss number one, King Knight. I don't know if I call him fabulously regal. That's right, Shovel Knight, he's not but a decadent dandy. Shovel Justice is the best kind of justice. Alright, so this boss is, uh, it's pretty easy. You have to make sure you jump when he does that big uh, attack that shakes the screen, otherwise you get stunned for quite a long time, and uh, you're almost always going to get hit. And, uh, other than that, it's basically just keep up the pogo in. You know, he's gonna throw some confetti out, but you should be able to kill him before you have to worry about the confetti. So yes, we made short work of King Knight. The deposed king can take his proper place on the throne once more. And after every boss, there's a short little interlude here where, you know, you make camp, you rest after a, uh, after a long day. Alright, it's time to pay a visit, I think, to the Trapple King. Oh wait, we have like a, uh, these pop up, I, I kind of wish these guys were more frequent because it's cool, it's a cool addition. Uh, it's basically just a, uh, just an extra level that pops up on the screen. Kind of like the, uh, the Hammer Brother in, uh, Mario 3, except it's an actual whole level and not just, not just, like, a single fight. And, uh, they're, they're, like, uh, I think there, I think there are only two where it's, like, a, a whole level. There, there's this one, and then at some point there will be a gym that shows up on the map. And, uh, it, it takes you to kind of a similar, similar level. And there are also, like, wandering warriors you can fight. And we should meet the first one of those pretty soon. Alright, Trapel King. Let's see what you have to say. Oh, you know what? I should have bought the other chalice first. Oh, well. I probably won't need healing potions for, for a while. Uh, yeah. I could use, I could use some aid. It's pronounced Icor, by the way. So yeah, refills all health and magic. You know, why would you even bother with these two? I don't know. Absorb nearby treasure for f for 60 seconds. This is, the, this is the only one that's worth it. On the plus side, once you buy the chalice, you don't have to pay to have it filled. Oh. I guess I have to, uh, I guess I have to use this one first. 
Crap. I can't press up while I'm on that platform because it'll talk to him. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm invincible for 10 seconds. Great. Alright, so yes, I will take the I Quarter of, of Renewal. Yes. Alright, everyone, sit back. Grab a drink. The ceremony is about to commence. That's half trout and half apple, by the way. Troutple. And, uh... You get this lovely, lovely little dance scene. What this always reminds me of is there's uh, in Final Fantasy VII, the first time you encounter chocobos, it's on a uh, chocobo farm right outside, right, right outside the main city that you start in. And the first time you you go there, there's this little dance sequence that all the chocobos uh, do for your entertainment. They just uh, it's a nice chore choreographed little thing. There's special music just for that one scene, and uh, I think it's about as long as the dance sequence uh, here as well. So yeah, that's what this always makes me think of. Like the Chocobo music always kind of pops into my head. You don't have to watch that every time you visit the Trouble King, just the first time. All right, so our Icor has been uh, provided. Let's go ahead and drop off these music notes I found. And usually, uh, well, I, I guess in every level, there's at least one music note, and it's always going to be whatever the music for that level is, and possibly, uh, possibly one or two more. All right, so I'm going to buy the next meal ticket to increase my health some more. It costs 4,500, and I think I want to go ahead and buy the next one too. I have enough, and there's nothing else I need to buy. I guess I could buy some more magic, but I, I always like having a lot of health. Look like another leg of fish. Looks like some, uh, some, some, uh, meat. Some nondescript meat. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's, uh, it's potent. Alright, let's go ahead and switch back to my flare wand. Since that's the, uh, I didn't show it off, did I? It's just, it's just a fireball. That's it. And, uh, it shows you down at the bottom how much mana it, it takes to use each of these. The, the Ikor, it doesn't take any mana, obviously, since it refills your mana anyway. And uh, it takes four mana, and you throw a fireball. That simple, but super effective. Alright, so, uh, can't do anything else until we defeat the Spectre Knight. So let's head to the Lich Yard. This level super reminiscent of uh, of Ghosts and Goblins. Like so, so when I was pl when I was trying for the uh, achievements, the speedrunning achievements and such, I, uh, sometimes I would turn the music off and listen to a podcast or something. And whenever I started this level without the music playing, the uh, Ghosts and Goblins uh, starting uh, the level one music always popped into my head. Although, this is pretty good music, too. Ah, crap. Sometimes it's not a turkey, sometimes it's a bomb. Luckily, you can, uh, you can swat the bomb away before, uh, before it can damage you. Aw, oh, man. I thought... I guess I can't get a high enough bounce to get that treasure chest. That's disappointing. Alright, Skelly. Had just about enough of your kind. Fortunately, the skeletons in this game are not nearly as bad as they are in Abyss Odyssey. I can get a higher bounce off this guy, can I? Because that's how you get up there. I guess it was because I was hitting their heads, and you don't get as high a bounce when, when you hit the uh, the skeletons when they still have their heads. Oops. And there are these ghosts that you can't kill, where you can just kind of uh, temporarily deal with them. There is a way to kill them, but that won't uh, come into play until a later level. Take that. 
yeah, mana power-ups also pretty plentiful in this game. So, you don't have to worry a ton about running out of mana. I think this is that giant skeleton that one of the townspeople warned me about. He's tough, but he's not unmanageable. Ow. I did take some damage, though. And he drops the full heal every time, so yeah. This game is not stingy with the, uh, with the items. These frogs don't do anything until you, uh... Well, sometimes they're already awake uh, when you enter the screen. But if they're asleep, they won't do anything until until you attack them. So, best to let sleeping frogs lie. ba -dum -tsh. Oh yeah, this, this level has dark segments, which... Uh, are kind of a pain to deal with until you memorize the, the layout of the level. Which I had to do since I was trying to speedrun it. I got really good at speedrunning these first, like, two or three levels without dying, but after that, uh, I mean, I'm sure if I play them enough times, I will eventually get as good. Oh, right. <sighs> Do I want to risk this just for a treasure chest? I don't think there's a music note up there. I'm, I'm almost sure to panic and choke trying to get this. Hey ghosts. Yeah, there's no music note, so if I was if I was not LPing this, then I would just skip this area because honestly, that's a very that's a very risky thing to do. Like even with as good as the mechanics in this game are, it's still really easy to you know one mistake you end up falling to your death. Uh, all right, I guess I want to go up here. See, I'm, I'm used to uh, I'm used to skipping all all of these superfluous segments. Uh, for the sake of the speedrun. So, uh, if I forget and end up not going to any of these, then, uh, then I apologize. Crap. Well, so much for the no death playthrough. You know, it's good to get it out of the way early, because I'm sure even if I made it through this level without dying, then, uh, it would have happened eventually, so be be better to uh, better to get my hopes down now than to keep my hopes up for longer than necessary. I don't think I'm going to go back for that gold just because it's a very uh, it's a very precarious area, and uh, honestly, I, I didn't lose that much, and I don't really need gold that badly. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not going back for it. See, I should have known better than to go for that because that was one of the uh, that was one of the segments I always skip, or that's one of the segments I've skipped in all my recent playthroughs. But at least I was able to get the music note before plummeting to my death. Man, I really, after playing Abyss Odyssey for so long, I really want to hit the L and R buttons to dodge, but uh, but that doesn't work in this game. This is, I got very proud of, uh, I, I became proud of myself for being able to get through this as quickly as I did for, uh, for speedrunning purposes. I am not a speedrunner, speed runner, by the way. Like, I, I never speedrun games normally. The only reason I was trying it in this game is because I wanted to get as many of these achievements as possible, and because this game is just a joy to play. Like, even though it only took me seven hours to beat, I still have, like, 40 hours on the clock in this game. For, for racking up the various achievements, just because I love playing it so much. So the best way to deal with this skeleton is to jump and let him get crushed by that. You have to be careful though, because like if I walk through here and I kill the skeleton before, uh, like before he was fully on this platform, then then I I've, I've gotten crushed there quite a few times. There are upgrades you can get to your shovel later on, and uh, and better armor you can get that uh, that has that have various effects, but they're not like they're not a central mechanic of the game or anything. Like like loot isn't really an aspect of this game. Speed.
speedrunning is a bitch. Yeah, I am. I'm not good at speedrunning. Like, I don't have the uh, e even games that I love, like Shovel Knight and Spelunky, which are the two games I've I've attempted speedruns of. Like, I don't have the patience to get good enough to speedrun. Like, some people can play games for just thousands and thousands of hours, just getting perfect at it, just memorizing every single aspect of the game. But, uh, but that is not me. I might go back and try speedrunning this game again. I don't know. Alright, do I wanna- oh yeah. I, I believe there's a Chester over here, yes. Yep, this is the uh, aforementioned phase locket. And uh, every time you buy, well, most of the times you buy an item from Chester, it gives you the opportunity to use it immediately. Like when I bought the uh, the flare wand, if, if I hadn't destroyed those piles of sand, well, no, I don't think the flare wand can destroy the sand. Hmm. I, I guess it doesn't really give you a reason to use it. Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, I can do this. You can uh, you can hit those tombstones to uh, to get more height out of it, but so sometimes you'll wake up a ghost in the process. Yeah, usually when you buy an item from Chester in the field, uh, it'll like show you ha show you how to use it without actually showing you. You know, like traditional good video game design. You know. Don't tell the player how to do something. Put them in a situation where they have to do the thing. Like in the original Metroid. The very first thing you do in that game is you go left, you get the Morph Ball, and uh, you cannot proceed until you use the Morph Ball. So, you know, very, uh, very smart design there. Or, I mean, in the original Mario Brothers, like, the very first thing it, it, it gives you is, like, a Goomba. To show you, hey, you can jump on this thing. Like, there's one action you can take in this game, and uh, this is what you use that action for. You know, tutorial-free game design. It's a very, uh, it's a very good skill to learn. Whenever I try and speedrun Splunky, it's me playing the game normally because I like playing like a badass. Unfortunately, I suck really bad at Splunky, and as a result, I've only reached the watery second area once, ever. Yeah, you definitely don't want to speedrun the game <laughs> until you're able to beat it normally. Uh, Spl Splunky is not a game uh, you want to try to speedrun until you've mastered pretty much every other aspect of it, at least in my experience. I know what you mean about playing like a badass, though. Like, even before I was good at Splunky, I liked, uh... I, pr I pretty much always kept the run button held down, which is still how, I still how I play. Like, I almost never take my... take my finger off the R2 button. Or off the, uh, the right trigger... button. Hello, Spectre Knight. You shall be su summoned when it's your time. Is that a threat? I believe this person just threatened me. I love the, uh, the jiggly text in this game, too. All right, War Inspector. Oh wait, <laughs> I thought I still had the. Uh, I, I thought I still had the uh, wand equipped. I tried to come up with a with a good War Inspector joke since since it's the Spectre Knight, but I couldn't think of any. You're about to get Bioshocked. That's uh, that's not a good one. That is more Inspector, right? The Bioshock guy? 
I might be thinking of someone completely different. I could make a Phil Spector joke, but Phil Spector's kind of a piece of shit, and I don't even really want to bring him up. Those are the only two people named Spectre I know, so my my options for jokes are pretty limited. I mean, I don't know them. They're 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 the only Spectres that I know of. I'm I'm out of magic. Otherwise, I'd be throwing more fireballs at this guy. You jerk. I remember when I had enough money to buy the shotgun for the first time, and first and only time ever. I accidentally threw the gun at the shopkeeper, and he shot me thinking I was out to kill him. Yeah, that uh, sounds like a mistake most people make at least once, quack party, so you know, don't feel too bad about that. It is kind of a shame that this game relies on the whole damsel in distress storyline. That That is like my one minor quibble with the game, that they couldn't think of anything more interesting than that, but uh, they do, uh, they do kind of subvert that trope a little later on, which uh, I, I won't say too much because I don't want to spoil it, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not as bad as a lot of games that, that use the whole damsel in distress thing. And so, sometimes you find the meal tickets just after fighting a boss. Uh, your life total, uh, 10 is the max. So, you can buy, I think... Okay, you start with 4. Uh, you, you can buy 3 and you find 3 uh, in the course of playing the game. Alright, so I haven't had to use my i yet, which is good. But like I said, most of my deaths in this game... Oh, that's the gym I was talking about. The uh, the gym level that pops up. They both they both uh, appear pretty early in the course of the game. They're, they're, actually, there might be one or two more that I'm forgetting. Because like I said, I've done the... Uh, I've done the first three, three levels of this game numerous times trying for the speedrun. And the, the later levels I've only done uh, three times. One in the normal playthrough, one in New Game Plus, and one uh, getting the uh, the no no relic slash uh, destroy all the checkpoints achievement. I completely understand what you mean when you talk about tutorialist gameplay. Ego Raptor pulled a good point or two, as well in the sequel. I just think, yeah, uh, I think I saw that. That was a that was a really good uh, good explanation of the whole thing. Yet every game I make has like half hour tutorials. Well, you know, some games are so complex you need the tutorials. Like I won't, I wouldn't want to play like a Civilization game or something like that, where they tried to not make... Oh, I guess I bought... Yeah, that's right, I bought all three of the Gotician's meal tickets, so the rest of the ones I find will be uh, in the course of the game. Yes, yeah, so, like Civilization, for example, it needs very robust tutorials. Well, I guess I could... Uh, I don't think there are any more relics. Oh, that, that's right, I, st I still need to buy the other, uh, the other chalice, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then, I don't think there's... yeah, uh, I bought everything Chester has to offer, so the rest of this money, I can just go in and spend on magic upgrades. See, like I said, money is not really an issue when you're just doing a normal a normal run in this game. So let's see, that's 1500, 2200, might be able to get one more. Yep, and the, uh, the max amount of mana you can have is 100. So yeah, very, very simple multiples of 10. 10 health, 10 times 10 mana for the max. 
Alright, so we took care of King Knight and Spectre Knight. We have Plague Knight and uh, Treasure Knight. Uh, I'm going to save this level for after I do Treasure Knight because I like this one so much more. I mean, I like every level in this game. This game is so good. Like, the action is just perfect. Everything about it is just, it's just fantastic. I am so, I am so thrilled that there are still people making games like this. Like, I would say this is the best 2D, uh, classic style platformer I've played since, like, Mega Man 9. Mega Man 9, that was what, like... God, that was like 2008 or something, wasn't it? So yeah, it's been like six years until we've had a, this style of game that was this good. I mean, there was like the, uh... The, uh... HD remake of Cave Story and stuff. Well, not, not HD, but like the remake of Cave Story and stuff. But Cave Story was a much older game originally. That, that was like, uh, 2003, I think. So yeah, I can't think of another game since Mega Man 9, where uh, the whole classic NES aesthetic was handled as well as this, as well as, uh, as this game does it. Of course, I, I didn't play Mega Man 10, uh, which I heard was quite good as well, so uh, take that with, with a grain of salt. RuneScape was horrible at that, forcing you to play this, this three hour long tutorial about killing a dragon before you started playing even if you were a veteran to the game. Yeah, that sounds pretty rough. I remember trying RuneScape when I was a teenager just because it was a free MMO. And, uh, and that game just did not grab me at all. Like, if there was a tutorial, I don't think I even made it past it. I can't believe that game's still going. That kind of blows my mind. Who would have thought RuneScape would still exist and be relatively popular in 2014? By relatively popular, I mean compared to like... Uh... I don't know, the smaller MMOs that have come out recently? Actually, I'm, I'm just pulling numbers out of my ass. I, I have no idea how popular these games are. But, I mean, it seems like there's still, like, a relatively active player base on RuneScape. This game is like Rogue Legacy and Mega Man had a baby. Uh, yeah, I mean, the whole pogo mechanic is basically right out of Zelda 2, which is a game I never played, but, uh... I kind of wish I could, uh, I could go back and play that now, but, uh, I'm sure I would be terrible at it. And, uh, DuckTales, of course, had the whole the whole cane pogo attack but it, it was a lot uh, it was it was a lot iffier than the one in Shovel Knight too not really thrilled with this music this isn't the uh, I mean it's fine it's not my favorite track in the game the next level though and hold on to your butts MMOs like that tend to survive because of invested time. Yeah, that's true. No one wants to quit a game they've sunk years into. Yeah, I think that's like the main reason World of Warcraft is still the most popular MMO. Because people are just sunk so much time into that, into that game. No one, wants, no one wants to switch to something else. And it's, it's kind of crazy. Like, I, Giant Bomb just uh, did a feature where one of the staff members... Uh, started playing WoW for the first time, and he's never played an MMO before. Uh, you know, he just wanted to, uh, to, you know, basically see what it was like on the other side. And, uh, man, that still looks like a 10-year-old game. Like, I, I thought there had been, like, graphical patches and updates and stuff to the game. But, uh, he started playing it, and, man, that looks like a game that came out in 2000... What was it? 2003, right? And, I mean, people still play that. That's still, like, the gold standard of MMOs, which is kind of mind-blowing. I mean, I'm assuming that that was, like, I mean, it was the original... Hey, Chester, I bet you got something good for me, huh? 
Oh, snap. But yeah, I'm sure, like, the expansions to, to WoW look better. And, he, I mean, he was jumping into basically the content that came out in 2003, which is why it still looked so rough. But, man, like, a new WoW player starting out, and that's the first thing they see? That's, uh... That would be kind of off-putting. Oh, holy shit! Sultra J, man, what's up, man? But yeah, I mean, I've, n I've never been an MO MMO person in general, though, so, uh... Like, even if WoW looked amazing, I probably still wouldn't play it. I mean, I definitely still wouldn't play it. Throwing anchor. Wow, that's pretty expensive. I forgot. Uh, forgot the items got that pricey. Those graphics weren't much to speak of even at the time. Yeah, I mean it's. Uh, it's not like a. Uh, I mean, it definitely wasn't like a powerhouse like Doom Three or something, for the time it came out. It was just a serviceable MMO, basically. I dig some Shovel Knight. I see what you did there. Crap. Yeah, I, I, I dig this game a lot too. Like I said earlier, my favorite game of the year so far. Not that I played a ton of games that came out this year, but uh, it's going to take something pretty special to, to unseat this as my GOTY. Oops. I actually don't know if there's anything else this year that I'm looking forward to, so... I do want to get Divinity Original Sin at some point. That game looks super awesome, but uh, I haven't uh, haven't had the funds for it recently. I mean, I have, but uh, I guess I spend them on other things. Can this go through a shield? I forget. Usually I just, like, use the uh, phase lock and just blow past this guy. Oh well. It didn't seem as annoying as the Yellow Knights. It's definitely up there for me. It's incredibly polished and it shows it. Yeah. I really, uh, oh. <laughs> that never happened before. I, I really look forward to uh, what these guys are going to do next. I mean, supposedly there are like updates coming for this game where they'll add new characters, like new playable characters and stuff. I don't know how, how they're going to manage it though, because uh, like, this game is just so tuned for playing as Shovel Knight, I'm not sure how playing as other characters is going to work. Uh, I, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Like, there's one character specifically that I have no idea how they'll handle that I don't want to mention because it's kind of a spoiler, but, uh... Yeah, it's, uh... It's an exciting time to, to be a gamer, I guess. This was a Kickstarter game too. I forgot to mention that. This is one of the uh, one of the big Kickstarter success stories. Like I, I saw this game. I, I saw the Kickstarter when this game was like announced, and it looks super cool. But I didn't back it at the time because I had never heard of anyone responsible for it. And uh, you know, backing a Kickstarter is. I mean, it's still kind of a crapshoot. Like, I, I tend to back games that have a good pedigree behind them. Like, uh, I backed the Double Fine Adventure, and I backed uh, Shadowrun Returns, since I was the actual Shadowrun guy working on it. But uh, I mean, honest, I didn't look forward. I, I didn't look into it that that deeply, honestly, because uh, like I didn't. I, I had no idea that one of the people who made the game worked for Way Forward until re relatively recently. But yeah, some good stuff still comes out of Kickstarter, despite all of these spectacular failures that that get a lot of uh, media buzz. Hotline Miami 2 is going to be hardcore up my alley. Oh yeah, that is this year, isn't it? I forgot about that. We're aiming to kickstart one of our bigger projects. We're knocking out smaller ones first to build ourselves up. Yeah, pro probably a good idea. You know, have 
have some sort of finished project under your belt to show people, hey, we can make a game. Uh, you know, that'll... I mean, just having a game is like a, a huge step in the right direction. Hmm. Yeah, I'll smash this one. I'm doing okay. That's a good word. Avarice. You jerk. I made it through this level without a death, didn't I? This is one of the levels that kept, uh, kept tripping me up when I was going for my no death run. But, uh, I made it out okay. Ow! Of course, uh... I might, I might have spoken too soon. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop my Ikor, which is a really gross sentence to say. I was really bad at fighting these bosses, uh, but I mean, it's, they're like Mega Man bosses where they always have a really predictable pattern, and then once you get the pattern, they're they're pretty easy to deal with. You're going to be adding the new modes as they go, Kickstarter stretch goals. I get the feeling they'll knock it out of the park if the main game is an indication. Yeah, uh, I definitely uh, definitely trust these guys to, to do right by the backers. I mean, I'd say overall Kickstarter is a net gain. Or for people who play video games, because there are big failure failures, but there are also games that probably never would have been made if it weren't for Kickstarter. Which uh, I, I think they uh, they balance each other out. This is one of the wandering uh, fighters that I was talking about. No, I don't think that's me. You're thinking of another knight with a shovel. Uh, that's kind of a, a leap of logic there. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> My chalice was still select selected. I was like, why, why aren't I firing fireballs? Pro dodge, pro dodge. The one I dodged, not not the one I got hit by. That wasn't pro. But when I dodged, man it looked pro. And I, I hope this is one of the playable characters they add. I wanna use two boomerangs. Or toomerang, if you will. I will. Two meringues. Yeah, I know. I'm hilar I'm hilarious, aren't I? I told you guys I should have my own sitcom. But you know, NBC just won't return my calls. Their loss. Alright, let's go sell these musical notes. Maybe spend some of this money. Actually, I won't spend any of my money here. Uh, because the next town unlocked. And I'm going to go spend some of, some of my money there. gonna get into the coding side as well that's awesome yeah I mean I've, I'm no 
I have no coding ability, but I mess around with like Game Maker and stuff. And yeah, making games is super fun. I just need to, uh, I just need to buckle down and, and work on stuff, which is what I have a problem making myself do. Alright, so, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's Croker's, uh, opposite toter. I'm so grumpy, I'm just not in a good mood. I wish someone could cheer me up. Hmm, nope, nope, he's not having that. I thought that was a pretty good joke, but, uh... I guess you can't please everyone. Oh, jeez, lady. I mean, we just met, but, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm flattered and, and everything. Wow, all the ladies are after Shovel Knight, apparently. <laughs> Mr. Hat, eh? Oh, this peacock gent forgot his wallet. Hmm. Thousand gold, huh? Yeah. You look like you're good for it. Oh. A thousand gold short, eh? Well, you know, the night code and everything. Always helps someone in need. And people in this town are jerks. Let me guess. A thousand gold, right? Fine. Well, this guy likes my helmet. It's true. I do like my helmet. Man, these people take my money, this guy attacks me. What what is up with this store? Well, I guess I made my, my money back by fighting this guy, so... My hunger for hats took control! This is like a Team Fortress 2 player. That's true, technically it is a helmet. Alright, well with that little encounter out of the way, let's, uh, let's blow some of this hard-earned gold. Hello, Shovel Smith. Alright, so there's like a charge up attack. Uh, there's something that lets you dig up a pile with one, um, one press of the button instead of having to do it like four or five times. And when you have full health, you uh, slash the ground to, uh, to make a spark attack. Uh, I mean, this one, you know, it's, it's convenient, but it's not really vital or anything. I'm going to get this one. And, uh, this one. So, I don't have full health, but when I do, there will be, like, a spark. And now I have this charge-up attack, which does a pretty good amount of damage. And it has a nice big, uh, big reach. Can I get that music note now? Yeah, I forget. I might not be able to get that until something opens up later. I really love the half-animal people in this game. Like, you know, there's all varieties of animals. There's uh, a rooster and lots of horse people and peacock people. And, you know, they're just living in harmony with humans. It's a really, uh... Oh, yeah. 
Wait. Can I make this jump? Hmm, I don't think so. Alright, I need to go back up there and then jump across the, the rooftops to get that music note. And this guy sells armor, but I just spent most of my money on weapons, so uh, I'll come back and revisit with him later. Alright, enough dilly-dallying. Let's, uh... Oh yeah, there is another gym level. I forgot about that. And there's another dude we can fight. Excellent. Let's, uh, let's go here first, I guess. Alright, so unlike the other gym level, this one isn't an auto-scrolling level. It's just, uh... Just a bunch of, uh... Sand piles. Filled with golden gems. This is a really, uh... Really lucrative place to go. I don't think there are even any pits or anything on this level. You just kind of fall down until you get to the bottom. So yeah, that's that's a ground spark. It, uh, I mean, it's not the most useful thing in the world, but it's handy to have sometimes. I could have done this better and gotten all the gems, but oh well. I missed one, that's a- oh yeah! I skipped all these levels when I was trying to speedrun it too, so I, I am not as familiar with them. Dang, that's a lot of money! What a haul! That's way better than that other gem level. Alright, let's go ahead and, uh, fight this person. Supposedly this is modeled after, like, somebody else's character in, in, like, a cartoon or another game or something. I'm not exactly sure. And they were, like, a... They were a, a big Kickstarter backer, so they got their likeness, or the likeness of their character in the game. Hey, Just Dragon, what's up? Like, I... I think I might be crazy, but I think this character is like in Dive Kick or something. I I, I don't know. I don't know where you're, where you're getting your information. So this guy's trying to get into the Order of No Quarter, and he thinks that by defeating me, they'll they'll let him into their ranks. I, I should have filled up my chalices before I fought this guy, because this guy's actually kind of tough. Like he's uh, I've, I've a lot of people I know have had trouble with this with this guy. So hopefully I can uh, I can take him out without without dying. I need I need to jump when he does that attack. I need to get the hell out of the way when he does that attack. Jesus. Ow. Alright, one health left. I should be able to uh, pull this off. Excellent. That's right. <laughs> oh, poor Baz. Let's get a few more gems out of him and be on our merry way. Baz is an asshole. Yeah, kinda. But you, you have to feel sorry for the guy. He just wants to be popular. Alright, this next level. It has my favorite name of any level ever. The Explodatorium. It's just amazing. And it also has some of the best music in the game. Sorry, just enjoying the music. 
I believe this is one of the tunes that was made by the former Capcom employee. Like most of the soundtrack was Vert, I think, and then she made one or two of the tunes, and I I'm pretty sure this is one of them. I mean, you can definitely, you know, get a, a Mega Man vibe from this music. No! Oh, phew. thought I was going to fall in a pit. Of course, I already fell in a pit, so... Doesn't really, uh... Doesn't really make much difference at this point. Man, this music is so good. One of the other nice things about not being on the actual Nintendo hardware is that, uh you wouldn't be able to have the music without being interrupted by the sound effects. And uh, that, that was one of the things... I, I read somewhere that they were considering emulating the whole NES uh, uh, sound effect issue. Like, you, you had to use one of the sound channels for the sound effects, which meant part of the music would cut out whenever a sound effect played. And they, they decided not to go in that route. The track is really like if Mega Man had a Ghost Man or some such. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it just nails that, uh, yeah, that creepy, uh, so it's almost like a Castlevania track, the way it's, like, kind of dark and gothic, but, you know, techno at the same time. Of course, that's Konami, not Capcom, but kind of has the same, uh, same general vibe to it. I was listening to the Retronauts podcast. Uh, they did an episode all about the the original three NES uh, Castlevania games, and uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, the designer of the original Castlevania is like just some some guy. Like nobody really knows anything about him. Like no one's been able to get an interview with him or anything, which is kind of fascinating. L like. The Castlevania series, the name most closely associated with it is, uh... Oh god, I, I forget his name now, but, uh... Basically, he was responsible for everything post-Symphony of the Night. And the original Castlevania games, well, the, the, the NES ones anyway, like, there's kind of no, uh... no real pedigree behind them or anything. Like, the person who did the music for the old Castlevania games is more... Like, has more involvement with today's game industry than, than the designer did. Which is really kind of a shame, because... Well, 1 and 3, anyway, were really excellent, uh, well-designed games. Oh, come on, stupid slimes. This, this area tripped me up a whole bunch when I was going for my Deathless playthroughs. The way the, uh, the terrain kept disappearing. Wait, how do I get that again? I forget, do I just need to lure this guy over here? I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I bet there's somewhere... Yeah, that's right. I need to not do that. Same composer I think worked on Castlevania and Mega Man 1. Oh, okay. So Castlevania uh, did have a bit of crossover with Capcom there, that's interesting. And she's the one that did this track. Man, I feel uh, feel really bad about about the way I died there, but uh, I guess it's uh, it's bound to happen at least a couple times, especially once I reach the tougher levels. I just say I'm feeling pretty good about my. Uh, my skills so far. O only dying twice up to this point is pretty good. I should probably be leaving more of these checkpoints alive because it's not like I really need the money that badly. I mean, the only things I have to buy 
are the uh, the relics that pop up. And at this point, I, I have the relics I'm going to be using for the most part. And then I have to buy some armor. Really, the, the armor doesn't do anything that important, so... Yeah, I think I will, uh... I'll let the, the checkpoints be from this point on. Ah, crap. It's also really easy to get tripped up on this section and, uh, and hit those spikes, because, you know, spikes are, are one-hit death, so that's a very easy mistake to make. Alright, see you later, J-Man. Thanks for, uh, hanging out. Going to bed at, like, 3 in the afternoon a lot, damn. Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for coming. Hope to, hope to see you sometime soon. I probably won't finish Shovel Knight, or I doubt I'll finish Shovel Knight in this playthrough, so, uh, I'll do one or two more of these this week. Crap. I really wish you could, like, hit those, those beakers, and, uh, and not have them blow up the ground, but when you hit them, all they do is, like, they kind of pop back up into the air, but eventually, you know. What goes up must come down. Oh, I think I just screwed myself out of get, getting that musical note. Oh well. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting for the ex exclamation point, but there's not going to be one because that's not an actual fishing hole. Alright, remind me to, uh, to fill up my chalices after this, after this level. Yeah, that checkpoint, you can stay. Oh, it's this guy. I like this guy. He's like a, uh, a rogue alchemist. Who turns into... Pretty cool looking monster. Sort of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Blarg. I'll probably go until about 7 for the stream. That's, that's a couple hours. Which, that should be, uh, should be enough to f just about finish up half the game, I, b I believe. You know, I'm, uh, I'm a lot better at this game now than I was the first time I played it, so it's a lot faster going. Alright, this is an excellent place to use as a phase locket. Like, I, I know I said I, I don't use it that much, but it's a lot easier to just do this than to actually try to time those jumps. Oh, wait. There's a thing over here, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, crap. Oh, looks like a... Another phase lock at time. The music note, though, just uh, just a chest. I'm not sure if I ever found Chester on this level. If, if he's here, maybe he might not show up on every level. Come to think of it, I don't think there are that many relics. Not 100% sure, though. Crap. That's not what I meant to do. Man, this music is so good. So I haven't really played that much of WayForward stuff. Like all I know is that someone who worked on this game used to work for WayForward. I, I don't know what games he worked on or or anything like that. But uh, they've always been a company that I've uh, I've meant to check out. Like I bought one of the Shantae games. The uh, I think it's the original 
Game Boy Color Shantae game. I bought that for the uh, Virtual Console on the 3DS, and I just haven't really checked it out yet. But th those games seem really fun. And I know they did the uh, the remake of DuckTales, and I know I know that was a pretty divisive game. I, I, I kind of want to try that game, but uh, I've heard mixed things about it. I never played the original DuckTales on the NES, so I don't really know. It, it might be one of those things that uh, that you had to experience the original to to appreciate the remake. It's kind of funny. We were just talking about Plague Doctors in the uh, Abyss Odyssey stream the other day, and uh, here we have a bona fide Plague Doctor. The creepy bird mask and everything. I have to say, he doesn't really look like a knight. I mean, his name is Plague Knight, but there's the, he doesn't really have any knightly qualities. And uh, way forward, I think they made Contra 4 for the DS, and that was another game I never played. So yeah, it's uh. It's an interesting company that I have very little experience with. Crap. This is a hard boss. Uh, this, this is one of the hardest bosses in the game, I think. Because his patterns are very erratic, there's just a whole bunch of shit flying around on the screen. But, I got him. Love the original DuckTales, haven't played the remake. There's another Capcom thing, right? Games like this, they all seem to go back to Capcom and Konami. They're like the, uh... The Adam and Eve of awesome 2D difficult side-scrolling platformers. I guess Nintendo has some credit there as well, but... Catcom and Konami are just the, uh, the pinnacle. Alright, I have plenty of money now, so I can go ahead and buy some of this armor. The only armor I really use... This one, you drop half as much gold when you, when you die. Which, gold, like I said, it's really not that big of a deal in this game. At least when you're playing on normal. Uh, sacrifice protection for a higher magic limit. I know a lot of people use this armor. I don't really like... I, I, I don't like items that make you sacrifice something to get another, uh, to get a benefit. So I, so I never use this one. This is the one I always went with. Perform two consecutive shovel drops to unleash a powerful charge slash. Uh, th this is another one where you have to sacrifice... Basically, you sacrifice, uh, stability, or you gain stability, but you lose mobility. Or you lose, like, it's weird, it's like, it makes it so, anything, anything you do is like walking on ice, which is really annoying. And then this, it lets you do like somersaults and stuff, but they don't actually do anything in the game. Like, it's just a different animation, which, which is cool, but not something I'm going to actively use. So yeah, I'll just go with the Dynamo Mail. And I can't, I can't demo it until I have something I can do two consecutive uh, drops on. But basically, basically, it just gives you a free, uh, a free charge up move when when you uh, do two consecutive drops, and I'll show that off in a minute. Oh yeah, I have some, uh, I have some music to drop off for Mr. Bard. All right, I forget if Chester has has an item at this point. I mean, I, I didn't find him in the Explodatorium. But I might have just missed them. Oh yeah, the alchemy coin. Toss a coin for a chance at riches. This one is useful in a couple of situations. It's not one I used very often. So yeah, I guess I just missed missed Chester in that level. Hmm, not sure where he would have been. Oh yeah, now that we had defeated uh, the Spectre Knight, we can get her treasure. I forgot all about that. All right, dancer, let's see your treasure.
I like how the other people at the tavern cheer her on. That's awesome. The animation in this game is just so good. Some of the best sprite work I've seen in a game in a long time. Oh yeah! Well thank you! What about you, King? You have anything for me? Huzzah! Hurrah! <laughs> Plume and Beaky. Okay, so no treasure from him. What about you, Juice Maid? You have anything for me? Nope. Okay. So, uh, I guess the rest of this money... Well, I might be able to buy a magic upgrade, I'm not sure. Yep, I can afford one. 4,000 to get the next one. Alright, so, so this is what the, uh, what the armor I bought does. Once you do two consecutive bounces. It's not quite as good as a charge slash, like the, uh, the area of effect is, isn't quite as big. Well, actually it might be exactly the same. I think it is. So yeah, it's pretty much exactly a, uh, oh yeah. There's one more thing I want to show off that I forgot about, sorry. I can go ahead and give him the music note I just got, so I have a reason to, to come back here. So once you get the charge up slash, you can uh, you can ruin Hoop Kid's fun by uh, by doing this. Dot dot dot. Sorry, Hoop Kid. But the next time you come back to town, she has another hoop, so it's just a temporary setback. Alright, I forgot all about this, by the way. There are a couple of these, uh... Once you get the right relic. Like, for example, I got the, uh... The phase locket. So there are these levels that are specifically designed to get through using that item. And actually, this will be a lot easier for me now that I have increased my mana a few times. So yeah, I mean, there's no way to, to get through these without using the phase locket because of the spikes. Crap. Yeah, the phase locket does not last very long. It, uh... Yeah, you, you kind of have to be careful with the timing there, which I was not. Yeah, j just a couple seconds. But it's still better to do that a couple times than to use one of your, uh... One of your I-Core slots, getting one of the other types of I-Core. You can also do it in midair, which... It's quite handy. That saved my ass a few times. So I'm pretty sure these are relatively short. They're about as long as the, uh, the gym levels. Wow, didn't even need to use my locket for that one. The slime helped me out. Alright, so that's taken care of. Let's go ahead and, uh, fill up my, my chalices and let's do one more, one more level. So, go ahead and get two healing potions. Don't think too hard about where the i is coming from. You know, when you think about it, drinking milk that comes out of a cow's udder is really gross. So drinking fish spit really isn't that big of a deal when, when, when you get down to it. Alright. I have another special level down here, but uh, I don't have the item I need to do to do this one yet. So, let's take on Mole Knight in the Lost City. I think this is as far as I made it in my no death attempts. Like I, w I was able to do uh, King Knight. Spectre Knight, 
Treasure Knight and Plague Knight without dying. But then, by the time I got to Mole Knight, I would, uh, I would always die on this level. Uh, hello, Afterall and Purple 566 welcome. Good to see y'all. Milk is still relatively normal. Yeah, see, we think it's normal because we're so used to it. But, I mean, when you really think about where milk comes from, like, I mean, it's normal for, uh, for mothers to breastfeed their babies, obviously. You know, human milk. That, that's fine. But man, drinking stuff out of a cow. I, I mean, I love milk. I love dairy products. But uh, you have to admit, it's a little, uh... It's a little unseemly. Crap. These things take a million hits to die. That's right. And by a million, I mean four. When you leave it to rot, and it solidifies to a lump, and you eat that... Well, I mean, there's your problem. You should not eat that. That's, uh... That's not something you should be putting in your body. Yeah, it took me forever to realize I could actually stand on this beetle. Like, I, th I thought I had to bounce on its back for the entire duration of, of this section, which is really difficult. Not being able to, uh, to stand on this part. But eventually I learned. I mean, you would think I would look at how flat that part of the beetle is and think, oh, it must be flat so I can stand on it. But uh, my brain does not always work that way. It's really convenient that there's walls here so I can use this beetle to get up here. It's almost like this level was intelligently designed. Crap. This cheese stuff is among the weirdest things ever. Oh, I get it. You're talking about not not milk that you just leave sitting out, but but you're talking about cheese. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I, I could definitely see why someone would think cheese is gross, but I happen to love cheese. You know, I, I'm able to to separate the origin of cheese from from my experience of it. I mean, it's the same with meat, actually. Like, if I'm eating something where it's very clear what part of the cow it is, or what part of the animal it is, then, uh, then I don't enjoy eat eating that. Like, I don't like eating shrimp, because they're still, like, in the shape of the animal. And, I mean, maybe this is hypocritical of me, that, you know, I'll, I'll eat meat, but not if it looks like an animal. But, uh, I don't like eating shrimp. I don't really like eating any meat that still has bones in it. That, uh, that grosses me out. Like, a anything, like, when you see people eating, like, a whole fish that still has eyes and stuff, like, that's, that's not something I will, I will eat. Or you see videos of people eating, like, octopus that, that still, like, that still looks like the octopus, and, uh, yeah, that's not, uh, it's not my jam. Now, calamari is pretty good, because it's just, like, uh, you know, these deep-fried rings. Obviously, I wouldn't eat it unless it's deep-fried, but, uh, yeah, if it still looks like a squid or looks like an octopus, then that's not, uh, it's not something I'm interested in. There are like 18 million types of cheese, says Quack Party. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. I just need to, uh, kind of hurry my way through here. I mean, I don't like every kind of cheese. Like, I don't like, uh, like moldy cheese. That, that's not something I want to eat. Hey, Chester, what's up, dude? What you got for me? What's good? Dust Knuckles. It's a great name for an item. 
want to dust you with my dust knuckles. And uh, remember how I said every time you get an item, you get a chance to use it. That's basically what this is. You're gonna dash your way through here, and it looks really cool. They were debating the merits of cheese in the chat room. I love my chat room. We have the best conversations here. It's essentially a bowl of mold. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's, it's delicious mold. Alright. It's time for the Jupiter jump. I could fish, but uh, I think I'm good. I mean, I don't need money, and I don't really need any of the uh, any of the icors the fish will offer me. I love how you can hit hit those things with this with this green slime and turn them back into normal green slimes, the ones that are on fire. It's a really cool little detail. Alright, how do I want to do this? I'm going to do that, grab that gem, and then do that. Oh, uh, I, I guess I have to hit it onto that platform, that's right. Crap. I, rem I remember back in the Laser Cat stream when everyone was talking about lava for an hour straight. I forget that one. Oh, crap. I remember everyone was really mad at me for not knowing what, what Kofi was. But I've actually eaten Kofi since since then, so uh, I'd be able to nail that trivia question now. It's pretty good too. Fire slime, normal slime. Duke, are you going to be streaming Binding of Isaac Rebirth? You bet I am. As soon as it comes out. That that is a game I am uh, I am extremely looking forward to. I didn't mention it in games I was looking forward to because I don't actually know if it's coming out this year or not. I mean, it seems like it should be since they've been working on it forever, but uh, I don't know. Oh crap! I might have screwed up. Okay, I'm good. Whew. Cut it close. I don't know how to get those gems up there. I mean, I can't, I can't bounce up there. Oops! Shit! I saw that one coming. There's a Binding of Isaac remake. Heck yeah, there is Quack Party. It looks like it's going to be awesome too. It looks like they're going to fix the uh, the issues that the original had with the controls getting sluggish when there's a lot of stuff on the screen and all, all the weird little jank that, that the original had. Because they're making it in, you know, an actual game engine and not Flash. Or, I mean, I, I don't know. They're they're programming it in something besides Flash. I, I don't know if it's an engine or what. Ah, uh, crap. No! <sighs> Lords of the Fallen and Inquisition are my two games of the year. I have no idea what either of those are. I have literally never heard of those. They sound like RPGs. I love Binding of Isaac, but always had technical issues with it. Yeah, that that game, even on a good computer, that game didn't run very well. Which is a sh which is a shame. I mean, I still love that game, but uh. But yeah, that, that game was not uh, was not the solid piece of programming that this game is. Yeah, I have no idea how to get those gems up there. I'm not going to worry about it because the last time I worried about it, I died. Not heard of Drag- oh, okay, Dragon Age Inquisition. Yes, I, I have heard of that. Is that coming out this year? 
I did not know that. I have no, uh... No familiarity with the Dragon Age series. Like, I tried to play the first Dragon Age, and I did not understand it at all. So, uh... Yeah, I'm sure that game's gonna be really cool. Alright, you gotta be careful here, because... If you keep your pogoing up, then... You're gonna hit these blocks before you're ready and fall in the lava. So, sometimes you have to, uh... You have to slash the air to stop pogoing. Which is kind of weird. Crap. I'm just gonna go through that guy. Screw it. Oh yeah! I need my dust knuckle. Very satisfying action on that dust knuckle too. I've noticed you tend towards indie titles. Well, that's not necessarily true. I just started playing uh, the new Tomb Raider game that just, just came out in 2013, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, I, I Yeah, I guess I do prefer indie titles to, to most quote-unquote AAA games, but uh, there, there, there is occasionally a AAA game that I like. Like, I really like the Mass Effect games, which, from what I understand, are pretty similar structurally to the Dragon Age games, if not mechanically. Yeah, like, I started playing the first Dragon Age because I really love the Mass Effect games. And, like, I had no idea how to control my party in the first Dragon Age. Like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I, I just got clobbered by the first fight I got into because I was trying to, uh... I was trying to, like, do melee combat with my main character and the other dude I had had a bow. And I was trying to get him to shoot the enemy, but he kept, like, walking up to them and, like, shooting them in melee, which made no sense. And I had no idea how not to make him do that, so... So, yeah, not to... I, I, I'm sure I was just... I just didn't get it. I was doing something wrong, but, uh... I didn't, uh, didn't go back to it yet. Hey. Don't make fun of another man's digging implement. You can't help it. That's not cool, man. Uh, Molnay is one of the places where the alchemy coin is really useful. When he's, uh, when he's traveling along the ground like that. You get several hits in on him with the uh, with the alchemy coin. I haven't actually showed it off yet, so I guess I should do that now. Yeah, he just uh, just flew over it, and that yeah, there we go. So yeah, it kind of bounces back and forth, and if I timed it right, I would have got even more hits with it. Crap. Okay. That worked out okay. Holy crap, the screen is going bananas. Damn it. <laughs> I jumped when I should have not jumped. There we go. See you later, Mole Knight. Oh, his Mole Minions are carrying him off. That's really cute. Alright, I think we have another dream sequence here, because we have a uh, another chest to get. Another, uh, another meal ticket. My friend gave me a code for Super Meat Boy. I still have not made it past the first boss. I like Super Meat Boy a lot. Uh, I... There's not a whole lot to the game, like, the normal game. Like, I, I beat that pretty quickly. And then, uh... Once you beat the normal game, you have to, uh... Well, you don't have to. But there's, like, a whole other set of levels for you to do 
that are just insanely difficult, and uh, I, I never made it past many of those. All right, we are making some progress. We only have uh, three bosses to go until we reach the castle. And the castle, it's kind of like Wily's castle in the Mega Man games, where there are like multiple sections to the castle. So we still have a pretty good bit uh, left to play. But uh, yeah, that, that's going to, to do it uh, for this session of Shovel Knight. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. I'm uh, right about at the halfway point, maybe, maybe a little further past that. And uh, I have to say, even playing this game as many times as I have, Going through it in a normal playthrough, still fun. Like, it is still just a joy to play this game. The controls are just perfect. Everything looks and sounds great. Uh, I'm having a blast going through this again. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. And there will be another one of these pretty soon. Uh, probably in a couple days, hopefully. So keep an eye on the Twitter stream uh, or the Facebook stream. Actually, don't follow the Facebook stream. Facebook's bullshit. Like, people don't see all of my updates on Facebook. Uh, but join the Steam community if you want instant updates whenever the stream goes live. Uh, that's You can find all this crap at dukeofthebump.com. The various ways you can follow me on social media. But, uh, yeah. I love everyone. Good night. <laughs>